For a free software, Blender's physics engine is really impressive. It has almost all the tools you would ever need. Whether you're creating a 60 story tower and toppling it to the ground, or simulating an entire ocean, there's a way to do it in Blender. However, one thing is missing, and that's cloth tearing. Nowhere in Blender is there any way to tear a piece of cloth. So no matter how hard you try, you're either going to have to do it manually, or you're going to have to model the torn cloth. Fortunately, there is an awesome plugin that I came across called ClothFX by AFX Lab. ClothFX is amazingly simple to use and it has so many different possibilities. So let's go ahead and check it out. So let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. If you haven't already, you can purchase ClothFX straight from the Blender Market, which is cgcookiemarkets.com and I'll leave a link for that down in the description. I already have it downloaded because AFX Lab was kind enough to supply me the add-on for free so I could make a tutorial on it, so big shout out to them. So once you download it, you should have this little thing called the bm underscore clothfx.py, which is your Python file that we're gonna load into Blender. Yours might not have this icon with it, that's just because I have Python installed on my computer. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. I'll be using Blender 2.77a. Alright, so now that we are into Blender, we're going to go ahead and exit out of the splash screen here. We're going to come up to File, User Preferences, go to Add-ons, select Install from File, and that should open up our File Explorer here, where we can then navigate to wherever, wherever we need to go. So I'm going to go to my desktop, wherever that is. There we go. And you can see I have bmclothfx.py, and you can see it has this little uh, cog down here and then we're going to come up to here and select import from file. Now you can see we have mesh cloth effects. We're going to tick this little checkbox right here and we're going to come down here and select save user settings. That way it's automatically loaded in every time we use it. So we can go ahead and exit out of user preferences now and I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything in the startup scene. I'm going to turn on screencasting keys here too just so you can see uh, what I'm doing. So it's not already open, you can press T to open this little side menu here. And we have these different tabs here, and all the way down at the bottom we have cloth effects. Now if we go ahead and click on that, you can see right now there is nothing in here. So we need to give it something to tear. So let's go ahead and create a simple plane. I'm going to scale it up eight times by pressing S and then eight. I'm actually going to subdivide it a few times to give us a better uh, result when we're playing with the physics. So I'm going to come up here to the tools. I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab over here in the 3D view. I'm going to click subdivide, and then we're going to drag up the number of cuts. I'm going to go with 10 because 10 seems to work really well for this because it gives us a realistic idea of what we're looking at as well as not being too overbearing. So we can press tab to exit out of edit mode and we can come back down to our cloth effects tab. And you can see now that we have this plane selected, we have two options. We have add tear system and enable tri trigger. Adding a tear system will basically allow the plane to become the cloth that is being torn and a trigger is what actually tears the cloth. So if I select add tear system, you can see it adds this big bounding box around it. And we have a couple new settings over here. You can see we have add tearing trigger, tear count, tear offset, and a bunch of other things. So in order to start off, we'll go ahead and check preview tears, and this will allow us to see where the tears are going to be in the final result. When we're rendering, we're gonna uncheck that. That way it doesn't show the tears before it's actually torn. I'm gonna go ahead and check it though, just so we can see what we're doing. We can also um, add on edge refine, which will make the tears look a little bit cleaner and not quite as blocky. And if you'd like, you can also add adaptive detail, which will add little tiny wrinkles and tears in. I'm gonna leave that off for now. And then we can also change the tear count, which means how many times it's torn. So you can see it's at five right now, which means there are one, two, three, four, five pieces. If we boost it up, you can see to 135, there are more pieces. And you also notice it starts to get blocky like this. And that is because we didn't subdivide our plane that much, only 10 times. So I'm just going to stick with 10 tears. That way we have some nice big pieces and some little tiny pieces, and it's a good variance. 
In addition, if you don't like the tear that you got, for example, like the seed, uh, you can change the offset, which is, like I said earlier, it's kind of like the same thing as modifying a seed. It kind of randomizes it and makes it look different every time that you change it. I'm just going to set mine back to zero. And now what we can do is we can come down here. And this is now I'm going to add in adaptive detail just so you can guys can kind of see it a little bit better. If we check adaptive detail, we can change the detail factor by increasing it. You can see that the gaps become much smaller. There's a lot more little wrinkles in the fabric. And you'll see it later when we actually do the physics simulation. It will be a lot more realistic. There will be a lot more bending points rather than leaving it off. But because I want to make this quick and make it just the basics, we're just going to leave it off for now. So I'm going to come up to here and select Add Tearing Trigger. And you can see it adds this empty cube. And then we have the trigger settings here. I'll go over those in a second. But let's go ahead and tear our first cloth. I'm going to press G to grab this and move it up. And I'm going to press S to scale it up just a little bit. And I'm going to come down here to the timeline and I'm going to hit play. Now if we take this and we drag it through, you can see already we're tearing the cloth. Just like that. And it's hanging down. Just like that. And it's a really realistic simulation. And you can see when we get to the end of the timeline, it resets completely. Which we can uh, use to our advantage, especially when we're working with different scenes. So now let's go ahead and change some of the settings of the um, actual cloth itself. I'm going to change the tear count to maybe 15, and I'm going to turn on adaptive detail. Now you'll notice a big difference. If you remember before, it was kind of blocky, but when we do it this time, you can see that it is still a little bit blocky, but there's less blocks. And say we boost the detail factor one more time, you'll notice it becomes a little bit laggier. As you can see, I'm only getting 10 FPS, but you can see how much cleaner it's getting just from that. And if we feel the need to, this is something that you probably do for a final render, you can boost it up to maybe four or five. I'm just going to do three, that way my computer doesn't completely crash. You can see it's already having some trouble and I'm not even colliding it yet. Uh, you can see right there, it's got those really realistic tears. Um, and it's so detailed that it's kind of a, just completely overkill, especially for the preview. Um, I'm going to change this back to one, just so we have that nice little a little bit of detail but not too much. So I'm going to go ahead and boost up the amount of tears and we're going to go ahead and completely separate some of these pieces of cloth. You can see they can completely separate from the actual base mesh which is really awesome as well because you can uh, just tear a piece of cloth completely and they do sometimes get stuck to your triggers but you know there's not much you can do about that. If you move it fast enough through it just tears right through and then all the pieces just go flying everywhere. So another thing we can do in here is check self-collide. Now self-collide basically allows the cloth to collide with itself, which is really important, uh, especially for super realistic animations. <laughs> you can see I'm just having so much fun just tearing the cloth here. I mean, it's not even that exciting. But um, it basically allows it to collide with itself, and that way it doesn't pass through itself, kind of like it is here. I'm not sure why I just did that. But, you know, of course, there there's some bugs in the Blender, uh, Blender collision systems. So let's go ahead and look at some of the trigger settings. So if we select our trigger here, um, we see we have a couple options. We have mesh volume, mesh volume plus proximity, proximity, object center, and particle system. Now I'm sure a lot of you can guess what these do. Mesh volume basically takes the volume of the mesh, and in this case it's actually a sphere even though it is technically a uh, square, it is a sphere. Um, mesh volume plus proximity, will take the volume of the mesh as well as proximity, which proximity is how near it is. So you'll notice when I uh, go into orthographic view here and I start to tear it, you'll notice I'm not even touching it yet and it just begins to tear. And this is really useful, especially if you're trying to do something that um, requires a lot of like collision because it, I've noticed when you use proximity, it gets stuck to it a lot less. We also have object center. And if we have object center, you'll notice it doesn't tear anything until we get right up next to the center, which is another useful thing. I don't have any specific uses for that, but it exists. You can use it. I'm sure some of you have uses. And we can also choose particle system, which I'll get into a little bit later. But I'm going to go ahead and tear my or delete my trigger. I'm sorry. And now we just have this. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. This <laughs> this torn piece of cloth here. And say I wanted to have it tear across a specific mesh. 
For example, if we add in the monkey head here, Suzanne, we can move it up. And you'll notice with this, or with the previous one, it was just tearing around a sphere, but we want it to tear around a mesh. So what we can do is we can take this monkey head mesh and we can click enable trigger over here in the cloth effects tab. And all of a sudden this has become a trigger. We can come down to the settings here and right now it's just set to mesh volume. So you'll notice eh, it's not gonna work for whatever reason. Oh, there you go. It was just having a little buggy around there, but you can see it now tears around the mesh of the monkey head. So you can see if I push it, oh no, it's so annoying. Um, sometimes it doesn't like to work. I don't know why. Um, looks like it's just not detecting the chin there. It's something with Blender's mesh collision. Uh, proximity might actually make it uh, a lot better. See, so, yeah, there you go. So you can see the, chin, the chin of uh, the monkey mesh tore it, but the head hasn't yet. Now you can see I moved that down. So that's how you add specific meshes for, um, or to actually be modified or and able to modify this uh, plane down here. So last but not least, today we're also going to go over dynamics. Now dynamics are our um, our actual physics. So right now this cloth is just kind of sitting here doing its thing, but. Let's say I wanted it to fall onto a moving object. So let's say I had a UV sphere down here. I'm gonna scale it just a tad, enable trigger, and we'll make it mesh volume plus proximity. Um, if I come up to here and check enable dynamics, you'll see it immediately starts to fall, and as soon as it hits that, it tears around it. And it actually, it's really awesome. I don't have self collide on right now, so it's passing through itself. But you can see it just falls straight on and just rips straight through, which is a really awesome feature. And I can move it up even faster and just absolutely trash the piece of cloth, just annihilate it just like that. And you can see it just gets, it kind of crinkles up awkwardly down there. I'm pretty sure that's because I've got the some funky physics settings, but you can see it really becomes, um, there you go, you can see it, it becomes a lot more realistic that way. And you could also use it with um, force fields. For example, if I put this sphere, oops, oh no, it just completely glitched away out of existence. Um, let's see here, object settings, one. There we go, it's back. I'm gonna move my cursor back to the center here. Let's say I wanted to put this up here and I wanted to have a, let's see here, force field wind. Let's have some wind come down here. And let's make the strength of that wind five. Oops, not five plus. I'll make the noise around five too. Now if we go ahead and play it, you'll notice that it starts to get blown up just like that. And as soon as it hits, it's gonna be kind of slow here, but as soon as it hits that, it kind of catches on it. And you can see it's actually kind of catching on it because that little piece was hanging on there. But you can see it just blows it straight up just like that. And it's a really neat feature. I can speed it up a little bit and you can see it tears even more. So when you're actually going to render this, so say I wanted to render this thing as my final animation, we're going to go ahead and change some settings. What we're going to do is we're going to change the detail factor up to maybe three. Um, what we're going to do from there is uncheck preview tears and we're going to, I always boost the tear count a little bit, I'm going to go up to maybe 70 and then we can also uh, move our tear object here and we can also edit any cloth effects or cloth um, things over here for example we can change the quality of the cloth up to like six steps that way it's a little bit cleaner and uh, we can change the collision quality up to four maybe that way it collides a bit easier I'm gonna turn on self collide and I'm also going to actually we'll do that later so I'm gonna go ahead and um, just take this existing creation right here and we're just gonna go ahead and simulate it at like realistic quality. I'm actually gonna change the detail factor up to four and collision step up to two. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit play and I'll be right back once it's done.
All right, so I decided 100 frames was enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually limit my render time to 100 frames, just so we have that nice little uh, area in here. And you can see it plays all the way through and uh, it's successfully simulated. So what we need to do now is select bake over here. That way we have our cloth simulation for good. And you can see it did have a little bit of an error up here, had a little bit of trouble tearing, which is kind of expected, especially for blood or cloth physics because they are the greatest, but you can just look at that detail. It's so realistic and it it's just really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and click bake, which will bake everything to its position. So now if we go ahead and play through, it is still going to be a little bit laggy, especially when we get to the tearing parts because it has so many vertices it has to calculate, but you can see it tears just like that. And it just comes loose just like that. And then this does its weird wrapping thingy. Um, I don't, I, to be honest, don't know why it does that, but it's there. <laughs> so you can see it's this nice, really realistic tearing animation. And uh, it, I did have that on proximity, I guess. Yeah, mesh volume plus proximity. So it had a little bit of a funkiness to it, but you know, it doesn't really matter. We can always fix it. And, um, but yeah, that's just a basic overview of this plugin. I'm going to do another tutorial soon going over some of the more advanced applications. But until then, I'd like you guys to experiment with this plugin. So thank you all for watching this tutorial. Be sure to check out this plugin by AFX Lab. It's really amazing. And remember that I make a video every Wednesday and Saturday. So if you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to hit subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys later. Adios.